based on the similarity of palette, style and compositions between the works of Jacobus Stork and his younger brother Abraham, it is thought that they shared a family studio. The careful characterization of the figures and the detail of the costume in the present painting suggests that Abraham may have assisted with the figures. This was not uncommon, as Abraham is also thought to have painted the figures in other marine landscapists' work. The topographical details incorporated in many of the capricci by Jacobus and Abraham suggest that they must have travelled widely within the Netherlands, as well as to a number of German cities along the Rhine and to Italy. The Italian influence is evident here with the Church of San Giovanni e Paolo and the Colleoni Monument in Venice, providing the inspiration for the architecture in this imaginary coastal port. This is a delightful early example of the great 18th century master Giampattista Tiepolo. This charming portrait of a pretty young girl carrying a basket of flowers, which has never before appeared on the market, is believed to have been painted between 1720 and 1725, when the artist was rapidly establishing his career in Venice, the city of his birth. Here the artist's quality is obviously evident, explaining why he went on to become one of the most celebrated painters of the 18th century in great international demand among the most cultivated courts of Europe. These two impressively large still lifes of flowers on copper by the 17th century Flemish artist Jan van Kessel the Elder belong to an original series of paintings executed around 1652. It is believed from a set of engravings that once belonged to the owner's family that there were 16 flower still lifes painted, showing eight different vases. The two panels that we are offering appear to be the largest of this series and exceed in scale and ambition anything else that the artist ever attempted. The paintings were acquired by a forebearer of the current owners the seventh Count of Buena Vista de la Victoria, who was born in Malaga, where he built his main residence between 1530 and 1540, now the Picasso Museum of Malaga, having been declared a national monument in 1939. His country property was the nearby El Retiro de Santo Tomás in Curiana, where the Count kept the family collection of paintings, which included works by Juan de Arellano, Margarita Caffey, as well as the set of 16 large-scale copper panel paintings of flowers by Jan van Kessel. No name is more celebrated in the entire history of garden design than that of Capability Brown, who arguably did more to shape the English landscape than anyone else, especially in the 18th century. His legacy can still be seen today, both in the parklands and gardens of some of our greatest country houses, and in this, the year before the tercentenary of Capability Brown's birth, it is very exciting to be offering an exceptionally rare and important example of his original design. The Royal Manor and Deer Park of Woodstock had been granted by Queen Anne to John Churchill, 1st Duke of Marlborough, in 1704 in gratitude for his victorious leadership at the Battle of Blenheim. Brown started work for the 4th Duke in 1763, around the time that George III appointed him Royal Gardener. He spent ten years on the project and brought to bear not only his remarkable skills in planting and shaping woodland, but also in engineering, earth moving, damming and drainage. The particular purpose of the present drawing, which is the first to incorporate the island in the lake, was to show a Gothicised improvement to the perimeter wall running along the side of the town of Woodstock. Brown spent ten years on the project at Blenheim, which itself took four years to complete, and his achievement was to create an undulating landscape of majestic views that complemented Vanborough's palatial mansion. Pater was one of the instigators of what was to become a fashionable new genre which combined the outdoor setting of the Fête Galante with the portrayal of fashionable society in the Tableau du Monde. This genre reflected the particular passions of Louis XV, who hunted at least three times a week and is known to have killed more than 250 game in a day. Here we see aristocratic figures in a rustic setting, a charming and vibrant image of noble culture, whose privileged status had for centuries been defined by the hunt. 
The picnic following the hunt was also a pretext for a highly refined mode of courtship and the aspect of the amorous pursuit is overtly celebrated in the present scene.